We're at the site where we're testing the gravity pump and using it as an example of livestock watering, which would be for a pasture like that behind me. The pump is able to bring water up out of the creek, 20, 30, 40, even 50 feet, we've had it tested, and get it into position where livestock do not have to go to the creek to get water, and then we have the advantage on a regular basis of improved water quality as a result of that. Multiple pumps can be strung together in order for volume. It's always creek dependent and it, it does require some gradient to the stream. If it's flat water, then a different type of pumping will be ne necessary. Where this is very useful is in remote sites. It's in sites that are shielded from the sun, such as in deep woods and places where you would not want to expose any other kind of pumping, mechanical or otherwise. This system will be useful for those kind of places where you just want to set it up and get it to run. You'll check it for maintenance, but it has the potential to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, at least down to temperatures as low as 20 degrees from our test this morning. We're going to be showing you how to set up a gravity powered water pump right here in the stream. Now most people look at this quiet little stream flowing along and they do not see the potential for much work to be done. They don't see much potential energy here. But on this very spot last year we had a gravi gravity powered water pump that ran all summer long and delivered water to a spot 900 feet from here. Um, uh, giving water for agriculture. The first thing we're going to do is set the base of the pump right here in this stream. It's very important that the base is set level in both directions. Most streams that run downhill even gradually have a pretty solid bottom so it's not that hard to find a place where you can set it down and move a few rocks around. The base weighs 220 pounds, so once it's in place, it doesn't tend to go anywhere. This whole big plastic structure can set on the base either this way or the other way. But you have to make sure when you set it down, this piston is over top of these four studs sticking out of the concrete. We're going to release the piston. These two long plastic pieces are just for shipping. We can dispose of them, but these two short pieces you'll need to keep. There are two plastic blocks with holes in the side. They fit like this and then down like that. All the fasteners on this unit are stainless steel so that 10 years from now when you have to take things apart you won't have a problem with rust. And when you put any fasteners on any of the moving parts you have to double knot them and make them tight because anything that moves for years on end is going to loosen up a single knot. The two remaining plastic blocks have the hole in the side. Your remaining plastic block holds down the other side of the center pivot and it gets double knotted too. The next piece we attach has all the check valves, the pressure gauges, and a settling chamber to collect debris. There's three ways to collect debris from here. There's a screen here where some things will float and catch. You can put your hand in and pull things out and there's a stopcock down there that you can open to get rid of sediment and sand. The base is built so the valve tower can either sit here or here. I'm going to put it on this side because the water is going to come from there through and into the side of the machine at this point. The only moving parts 
on the valve tower are these check valves. And once a year, you're going to want to open them up, and I'd suggest replace them. You can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot or any plumbing supplier. And remember, they have not been uh, glued in. They're just a friction fit. So removing them is real easy. got four empty studs left over. You could have used these for the valve tower, but since the valve tower is on the other side, we're going to use this for the pressure vessel. This is a pulse pump. Every time this rocks back and forth, there's a brief high pressure pulse of water. If you want to move that water a long distance, it's a lot more efficient if you smooth out those pulses into an even flow. And for that, you'll need this pressure tank. Your pressure tank comes shipped from the factory with 25 psi of air in it. That's a bit too much for this pump. So you're going to want to let a little bit of air out. Get it down to 15 psi, so you'll need a tire gauge to measure that. Now we're going to connect three hoses within the pump. I like to use a clear plastic hose. So when the pump is operating, you can make sure that all the air is cleared out. Because very often, air in the tubes becomes a problem if you can't see it. The piston has two hose fittings, top and bottom. You hook a hose to each, and you hook the two hoses from the cylinder to the two fittings on the valve tower, and it doesn't matter which one goes where. This is a standard piece of hardware plumbing. What takes the water from the weir upstream right into the machine, do not glue this in position. Because there are lots of times when you're going to want to stop the pump from operating and you want to pull it off and shove it down like this so water goes off to the side and you can get in and change hoses or do whatever. And then when you're done, just put it back in there again. So do not glue it. It will stay exactly where you put it. To prime the system, all you have to do is open the stopcock at the top of the cylinder and pour water in it while you move the arm back and forth. Somewhere upstream, you're going to have to stop the water and get it into your four inch tube. For that, you'll need these weir blocks. These are triangular pieces of cement. And if you lay them down like this, with the big face downward and the mesh in the middle, this is completely immune to heavy rains and gully washers. There's no way that this can get washed away. Your screen will get clogged up, and you'll have to clean it. But this is a stainless steel screen, and for the next 20 years, you'll just have to come by, depending on the weather and the season, and clean it up to make sure that your water keeps pumping. To prevent erosion of the stream bed, find some local rocks and put them under the water discharge. We're here at a water trough that's in a simulated cattle watering position or any livestock watering pasture. We're up out of the stream where behind me the gravity pump has been pumping water from a location about 20 feet below us. It's pumped all night into this morning. I was here at 8 o'clock last night in the dark, 
and it was actively pumping. We're here at 9 o'clock this morning, and it's actively pumping after the temperature has clearly been below freezing, probably 20, maybe even 18 degrees at this location. The water flow into the watering trough has been continuous all evening. The overflow has been trickling out. That flow of water has created a little bit of open water on the trough so that we have what's thicker ice around the margin, away from the flow, and thinner ice that a cow or other livestock should be able to break by their own action of drinking when they get thirsty. We're going to simulate breaking the ice and get it off of here. And there it goes. Thin right at the edge of this open area. Easy to break off. Thicker back away from the opening. As, as livestock would drink from this, there'd be a natural action that would keep the ice off the surface and the animals would be able to get water. 